Paul Hassan is uh, holding a PhD in economics from Jamia Millia Islamia University from New Delhi, India. Uh, his teaching interests include macroeconomic, economic growth, development, and econometrics. Uh, Dr. Khan has over 11 years of teaching experience working in India as well as in overseas. Uh, he is currently working as professor of economics and head of department of economics at the York State University in Nigeria. And he is also a visiting associate professor at the Department of Economic Cybernetics at Simi State University in Ukraine. And Professor Khan published uh, over 40 articles, and he is also an author of four books. And uh, Dr. Khan is an external examiner of various universities in Nigeria and India. And today, uh, I'm pleased to introduce you Dr. Khan, and he's going to deliver us a webinar about the situation, about the conditions of international business uh, during uh, and uh, before the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Khan, uh, thank you very much for agreeing to deliver this webinar for our students and for our faculty members, and the floor is yours. Thank you so thank much, you so uh, Mr. Almir, uh, to inviting me for this very important webinar. And I feel privileged and honored at the same time to have uh, with you and the uh, Western Caspian University Department of Economics, Baku, Azerbaijan. Uh, little, uh, I, I would like to make a little correction into the topic of which I'm going to talk over. Uh, international economic scenario, uh, COVID-19, during COVID-19, that is my the, that is the topic which I'm going to talk over it. So the, there is a little correction and, and uh, inconvenience is regretted. So uh, once again, thank you so much for giving me opportunity. I try to share, but uh, in the share tray, you know, is not coming my PPT. Can you see my PPT? No, we cannot. But if you want, my... doctor, you can send it, send it to me via email so I can share it from my screen. Okay, let me, let me send you now, now. Let me send you now, now. Just give me two minutes, not two minutes, less than two minutes. Let me send you. Okay. I'm sending to you, just share from your screen so that, okay. you know, I don't know what is the problem with this. Okay. It's, a, it's fine. Uh, no problem. No problem. I'm coming. So. Just check your email. Okay. I send it now. And now, now I send it. Just check it. Okay. Uh, you just share it from from your side, because from my side is I don't know. In tray is not coming anything. Is everything is black, so I don't know. It's fine, doctor. We will uh, sort it out. Okay, okay. 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 I have I have your uh, PPT. Now I'm yes. going to download it, and then I will start sharing. No problem. Just share it, and we'll. We I will use mine one here to to talk for it. You get it there? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm downloading it. Okay, okay, okay. There's an issue with download, so I'm going to share. You it. know, that's why, that's why I doctor, try to share it from. Start, my... uh, doctor, okay. you can start talking. So in the meantime, okay. I will try to arrange it. Okay, 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 okay. Not an issue. Not an issue. So, so uh, as we decided today, uh, I'm going to uh, talk over international economic scenario during COVID-19. I'm uh, Professor Bhola Khan, head of department, Department of Economics, 
Yobe State University, uh, Nigeria. You know, we, we know that uh, this coronavirus is started since 2019, uh, December 2019 from Wuhan. And from there, in February 2020, the WHO declared the global pandemic. This uh, COVID-19 coronavirus disease, 19, and it was the uh, name given by the uh, WHO, World Health Organization. So my presentation outlines are there, the introduction, global context, current international economic scenario, what is happening now during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. And uh, then I will talk a little about coronavirus in Nigeria, what is the impact in economic and health. Then uh, I will conclude my, my talk over it. And if there is any, uh, you know, issue, any, any, any query, any clarification, I would be happy to reply. So uh, let me start uh, from uh, introduction. As we know that for the first time, it was appeared in Wuhan, a city of China. The virus has been named SARS-CoV-2 and the disease it causes has been named coronavirus-19 disease that is short form in COVID-19 by the World Health Organization in February 2020. The rapid outbreak of the coronavirus, uh, an alarming health crisis that the world is grappling with in addition to human impact, there is also significant economic, business and commercial impact being felt globally. As virus know no borders, the impacts will continue to spread. In fact, 94% of the Fortune 1000 across the globe and businesses in Nigeria have been impacted and are already seeing COVID-19 disruption. We expect that the COVID-19 threat will eventually fade as the Ebola, Zika and severe acute respiratory syndrome that is SARS virus have been in recent years in Nigeria and especially in Nigeria and uh, uh, more specifically in West Africa. However, socio social economic impact will still be felt long after virus. In this uh, talk, the attempt is made to review of various literature on COVID-19 to know how it impacts the economy and health in Nigeria in specific and world in journal. So the first uh, important things which we are going to talk over the what is the impact of uh, uh, what what it has impacted globally. The novel coronavirus COVID-19 has infected more than 100 uh, more than 11.7 million uh, as per the July 6, 2020. Uh, the, the data was taken from the Worldometer. You can also see if you if you type Worldometer in Google, you will get the all the information. And 2.08 billion people globally, as per today, August 17, 2021, infected. Perhaps for the first time in several decades, the world is witnessing a type of disease that does not discriminate based on age, gender, or even race. The disease has categorized as infectious and contagious by health experts. As a result, the World Health Organization and governments alike have advised their citizens to practice good hygiene by washing their hands with soap and water or even alcohol-based hand sanitizer while keeping their nose and mouth covered with a mask. Here there is some statistics as per the today, August 2017, uh, August 17, 2021. The global cases, confirmed cases, is about uh, uh, two, two, 208 million. And the confirmed date was 4,384,989. And the serious cases so far as a world label, 107, uh, 107,338 cases are there as per today. USA having is still a first uh, position for the infectious and, and death and serious cases. India is now in second position in terms of cases and death and serious cases. Brazil, 
having third number russia having fourth france fifth nigeria sixth and azerbaijan is not sixth but is as a very uh, for, since we, i'm going to talk in azerbaijan baku that's why i took this azerbaijan and currently in azerbaijan from today 369 uh, 853 cases uh, are confirmed and there are 5170 confirmed deaths are there and thank god in azerbaijan there is no serious cases as per the other countries are having so it is maybe the governments are maybe the citizens are very active and very uh, obedient and they are they are following all the protocols of the covid 19 uh if we see the latest world economic outlook growth projections you will see the estimate was in 2020 uh minus 3.5 and projection for 2021 and 2022 was are is 5.5 and in 2022 is 4.2 if you see in 2020 the growth uh uh projection was our uh, growth estimated growth was negative but thank god uh for for the for the a uh, uh, uh intervention by the government and others agencies for this disease they uh, projected the world bank has projected uh, for world output is in 2021 3.5 and 2022 4.2 hope i am communicating mr almir mr almir hope i am communicating yes yes doctor okay 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 and the presentation is on whenever you need to change yeah, the slide yeah yeah i saw i saw it i saw it yeah. i saw it is is open thank god so so uh, i'm coming it has gone ah so if you see the for advanced economies for advanced economies the estimate was uh, minus 4.9 it is the more than the average of the world and for uh, for the 2021 and 2022 is uh, 4.3 and 3.1 respectively and if you see the for the united states it was minus 3.4 estimation in 2020 as per the world bank growth project, uh, growth growth estimation and projection was uh, 5.1 and 2.5 and if you see euro area euro area are more infected through the this uh, corona virus disease and their estimated growth in 2020 was minus 7.2% and the projected uh, is uh, projected is in 2021 and 2022 is uh, Uh, 4.2 and 3.6 respectively for japan is minus uh, minus 5.1 in 2020 uh, estimated by the world bank and uh, in 2000, 2021 and 2022 uh, are 3.1 and 2.4 respectively if you see for india uh, it was minus 8% estimated growth rate was registered in 2020 and projection was you can see in 2021 is highest among all the adva- advance and other country in nigeria if you see minus 3.2 uh, percent in 2020 and the projection r is tw- uh, for 2021 is 1.5 and uh, for 2022 is 2.5 so one can see the this uh, the impact of this uh, global pandemic how severe uh, is at the world level at the advanced economy and developing economy and like uh, under developing economy so you can see from this uh, latest world economic outlook growth projection which was done by the international monetary fund uh, given in world economic outlook update january 2021 so apart from that one can see the growth of world manufacturing output in percentage compared to the same quarter of previous year if you see this uh, uh, this uh, my cursor for it is, it is for developing uh, economy uh, excluding china and the that this purple is for china and you see in 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 uh, first uh, fourth quarter of 2020 2018 uh, the most of the you know chinese uh, growth rate in manufacturing was more than 5% and if you see in fourth quarter 2019 it was sharply started downward from from 2019 to first quarter 2020 wa- 2020 and it was registered minus about minus 13 to 14% growth rate but if you see other developing economy developed economy excluding china their growth rate was 
start their growth rate was in first uh, fourth quarter of 2018 was 2.5 almost 2.5 and it has it has started declining from from uh, fourth quarter of 2019 uh, to 24 uh, first quarter of 2020 is sharply declined and it was almost it is uh, if you see the world world ratio you can you can find out it was almost minus 6.5% growth of world manufacturing output in percentage uh, compared the same quarters of the previous year so here there are four uh, types of economies growth of world manufacturing outputs are there and compared in terms of percentage in same quarters of the previous one that is china developed country and industrialized country and world so you see this uh, uh, this chart was taken from the united uh, united nations industrial development organization statistics for quarter first 2020 and you can clearly see that how world manufacturing output was severely are is severely impacted from the corona virus disease you can also compare the growth rate of manufacturing output of industrialized region that one is for for all the economies in and the world this one is for the industrialized region in percentage compared to the same period of the previous year for east asia one can see that uh the growth rate was minus 2.5 and for europe you can say the growth rate is about minus 5 minus 5 minus 5% per, and for north america one can see in the in the in the same quarters you can find out about about minus 2.5% the growth rate of output uh in first quarter of 2020 this data also taken from the united nations industrial development organizations statistic uh for quarter post 2020 because after that there was no any data that's why that this data is limited up to 20 first quarter of 2020 and you can see from this this slide uh estimated growth rate by industry in percentage compared uh to previous year quarter first 2020 so if you see developing economy china and industrialized country there are three categories are there and if you see the growth rate of uh, except of food product uh, basic pharmaceutical product and uh, computer electronic and output product only these are the these are the uh, product in industrialized countries growth rate uh, was positive or is positive into a first quarter of 2020 remaining I, either in china or developing economy all the product all the product you can see basic pharmaceuticals food products computers basic metals beverages textiles chemicals coke refined uh, petroleum product other non metallic mineral product wo- wood product electric electrical equipment rubber and plastic fabricated metal product machinery and equipment wearing apparel motor vehicle and trailer semi trailer all the product in china are in developing economies or countries estimated growth rate was negative and if you see the most most impacted sector was motor uh, industry motor vehicle and trailer and semi trailer you can see that the, the growth rate was more than minus 25 in this sector uh, the, the sector was registered in first quarter 2020 and you can also see the textile you can also see the food product also having negative growth rate in 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 uh, developing countries and uh, china so from this you can see how uh, the global pandemic impacted these sectors manufacturing and the uh, uh, industry growth rate of industry in in developing country in developing developed country china industrialized country europe north america east asia south america uh, central europe and and european union how this global pandemic badly impacted uh through the through the through the spread of this uh, deadly disease and this data this uh, data and uh, diagram also a chart are also taken from united nation industrial development organization so the global pandemic uh, affected the global economy in two ways it is not limited is only related to the growth and 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 the manufacturing output and others it is uh, on the spread of the virus encourage social distancing which led to the shutdown of financial markets corporate offices businesses and events second one the rate at which the virus is spreading and the heightened uncertainty 
about how bad the situation could get led to fly to safely in consumption and investment among consumer and investors there was a general consensus among top economists that the coronavirus pandemic would plunge the world into a global recession and if you see the growth rate of the most of the economies of the world was negative they registered negative growth rate that's why the top economist of imf such as uh, geeta gopinathan and krishna georgibia stated that the covid-19 pandemic would trigger a global recession if you see the in india india is badly severely affected in 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 second wave and they are saying that in in the first week of october the third wave is going to be more deadly than the second wave so we don't know only the god knows what what is going to be happening unless you know the things will not going to be get better but it is a uh, the study says that the india and the most part of the part of the central european country like england and and if you see the china and and uh, currently in in uh, united states and if you if you see as i said china china is started the mass testing to 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 check to prevent the this global pandemic within the chinese territory so so the currently the most of the economies are still facing severe impact over impact of the this global pandemic over their growth rate of the economies and other sectors of the economies in financial market global stock market erased about 6 trillion usd in wealth in one week of one week from 24 24 to 28 february 2020 the sap 500 index also lost over 5 trillion in value in the same week in the us while the s&p 500 larger largest chain companies experienced a combined loss of over 1.4 trillion due to fear and uncertainty among investors about how the pandemic would affect firms profit the travel restrictions imposed on the movement of people in many countries led to massive losses for businesses in events industry aviation industry entertainment industry hospitality industry and sports industry there were also spill over to poor and developing countries that had a weak public health infrastructures and non existing social welfare programs hope i am communicating mr amir elmir hope i am communicating uh, yes yes professor everything okay. is clear okay yeah, okay receiving some questions in the end of the no webinar. problem you most welcome you most welcome no problem i am just Uh, I'm just confirming. You know, sometime the network got la- lost. Everything is perfect. So it looks like I'm I'm just only talking myself. So that's why I'm confirming whether the other parties are there or not. No, everything is perfect. So the COVID-19 in Nigeria, the virus has been dueling impact on the economy. As I stated before, it has dual impact. After the identify the virus in Nigeria, the government has imposed the lo- total lockdown, and due to it the economic activity has been choked completely on the other hand the world has been also locked down their borders and because of it the demand for crude oils and its prices fell down drastically and therefore the revenue of the country has been sharply down in may 2020 oil revenue reduced almost 125 billion naira that was given by the central bank of nigeria's report these two having most important impact on the economy and therefore government revenue has fell down significantly and due to this pandemic many people lost their jobs the impact of virus also raised the alarm on health structure of nigeria too if you see the i i just registered some of the states in within the nigeria for today's data and lagos is the one of the hit state from this global pandemic and second uh, second uh, hit uh, state that is federal capital of uh, territory that is abuja that is the capital of nigeria third one in nigeria uh, plateau state and fourth one is river state that is five top top states i just mention here into the into the uh, chart and it is the current data today's data that was given from uh, nigeria center for disease control ncdc the economic impact of this global pandemic in nigerian economy borrowers capacity to service loan which gave rise to non performing loans that depressed bank earning and eventually impaired banks soundness and stability there were oil demand stock which was reflected in sharp decline in oil prices the most visible immediate spill over was the 
drop in the price of crude oil which dropped from nearly 60 usd per barrel to as low as 30 usd per barrel in march there was a supply shock in global supply chain as many importers shut down their factories and closed their borders particularly china nigeria was severely affected because nigeria is one of important uh, is an import import dependent country as a result nigeria witnessed shortages of cru- crucial supply like pharmaceutical supplies spare parts and finished goods from china the national budget was also affect the budget was initially planned with an oil price of uh, 57 usd per barrel the fall in oil prices up to 30 usd per barrel mean that the budget become obstacle and a new budget had to be formed that was repriced with the low oil prices major market indices in the stock market plunged one investor pulled out their investment into so called safe havens like us treasury bonds stock market investors lost over 2.3 trillion nigerian naira it is about 5.9 billion usd barely 3 weeks after the first case of corona virus confirmed and announced in nigeria on january 28 2020 To combat with the COVID-19, the federal government announced a 5 billion naira as a stimulant package in April 2020. Apart from it, the CBI and Central Bank of Nigeria announced 45 billion naira for SMEs by May 2020. The Im- impact is not limited up to the economic. It is, you know, the it is a real impact on health. The public health sector in Nigeria has poor infrastructure such as poor emergency services, few ambulance services. ineffective national health insurance system insufficient primary health care facilities and these problem in the public health sector have often been linked to the high maternal and infant mortality rate in country currently nigeria operates a two tiered health care system with a large public health sector and a smaller private health sector compared to developed countries the private health care sector in nigeria is very small because of the limited funding for private health insurance also the majority of nigeria's healthcare healthcare spending is still dominated by out of pocket expenditure which account for 70% of total health expenditure which suggests that the most nigerian either do not rely or, or trust the health insurance system in the country or they are unaware of the availability of health insurance Despite the introduction of national health insurance scheme in 2004 the population covered by health insurance in 2019 was about only 5% of the total population the nigerian pharmaceutical industry is one of the largest in west africa and accounts for about 60% of the market share in the region but most of the active pharmaceutical ingredients used in nigeria are imported from china and only 10% of drugs used in nigeria are manufactured locally in the country and the industry is facing many problems such as a poor infrastructure and unreliable utilities scarcity or skilled worker poor access to finance lack of appropriate government incentives policy incoherence by the government poor demand due to robust competition from asian companies particularly china high cost of doing business as a result of imported and expensive product inputs regulatory problems amongst others the fa- the failing in nigeria's public health sectors made it difficult for nigeria to cope with the fast spreading covid-19 disease during the outbreak local drug manufacturers could not manufacture drug that could temporarily suppress corona virus in infected patients because the api used to manufacture suppressed drugs could no longer be imported because china shut down its factories and closed its border to control the corona virus pandemic that was ravaging china at that time also there were insufficient isolation centers in many states including in abuja and lagos the number of infected patients in lagos grew was to the extent that the stadium had be converted to the isolation center in the end The COVID-19 outbreak overwhelmed the poor health infrastructure in Nigeria. The uh, now conclusion is the immediate action supposed to be take, taken by the government, business with extensive presence in 
are direct ties to affect areas must take immediate action to access organizational exposure positioning team to appropriately support key stakeholder employees and customers medium to long term uh, actions beyond immediate actions organizations should use this as an opportunity to reflect on ability to navigate uh, navigate a crisis and going forward consider action to increase ability and become more resilient in the future the tax and legal services consideration a business worker work to respond to the impact and uncertainties of the novel coronavirus it's important to stay on top of the measures that government are taking in regard to tax deadlines relief and stimulatory measures as well as the tax impact of other businesses decisions such as employees relocation and so on financial reporting and audit consideration companies should monitor the current and potential effect that coronavirus outbreak may have and on disclosure and should strongly consider to ensure that their financial reporting and audit process are robust as possible and more jobs and jobs speeding up vaccination our vaccine production and roll out is the best economic policy available today to boost growth and job creation meanwhile to contain this virus need to create social awareness maintain in social distancing avoiding to mass gathering and most importantly to make more test test and test thank thank you so much for your kind patience uh, if you have any questions you can ask me i will feel happy to answer it thank you so much Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Khan, for a very interesting and comprehensive uh, presentation concerning the business scenarios pre-COVID-19. Yes, hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Elmir, donmusan. Elmir, manim, donmusan. Can you hear me now? Hello, Mr. Elmir. Are you okay. with me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. with you. Yes. I, the first question is about the economic growth rate of China. As mm -hmm. we uh, saw on the graph, mm -hmm. major economics recorded yeah. decline in economic mm -hmm. yeah. during yeah. the COVID-19. How China managed? How China managed to record? You know, if you see the structure of Chinese economy, first of all, when it was deducted in in Wuhan, you know, they closed the city, and uh, even even uh, till. Uh, this is the August, till June and till May, there was, you know, they, they control uh, very, 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 in a very good way. And if you see the structure of the Chinese economy, most of the Chinese economy based on the cottage, small, medium and micro. The, the, the contribution of, of, of uh, the big economies, uh, big, big industries is not as much as the contribution of the SMEs and, and cottage industry in China. And they, they initially, when they deducted, they control over it, the disease. disease. And the, from Wuhan and Beijing, there is a 130 kilometer distance. And up to June, up to May, there was no single cases was, was, was present in up to June. And that's why, you know, the, the, the impact of global pandemic within the China is not as much as it was impacted to the European Union is much uh, as much as it, uh, impacted to the uh, the Indian economy and the North America, especially uh, United States of America. So they they manage anyhow to control their you know control their 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 economy and uh, control this global pandemic. That's why if you see the impact of this disease is not as much as in China Chinese economy uh, as compared to the other part of the world. That only I can see because. It is the given by their their own own you know own, uh, given by the United Nations Industrial Development Organization. So so that is the logic behind. 
you know if you see, if you take a, for example in india you know india is having almost 1.44 billion population and the way they manage that was pathetic they didn't manage properly this pandemic and once once they once the uh, ra- once the rate of disease was going down in in the in the month of you know in january and december in november october last year so they started thumping their chest and it has again you know come back everybody is go openly and they have started opening without mask without proper following protocol and in february march april if you see in india the death rate every day there are 4 4 or 4000 people are dying because of because of that you know severe severity of the second waves uh, in india and similarly now if you see the chinese economy and china china is also started reporting the cases that's why they decided they took decision that they are going to hold a mass testing because only the way one can prevent this uh, this disease if somebody tested then you know that whether he is carrying or not if there is no testing you don't know whether he is carrying or not if die like for example nigeria you know where nigeria is a is a is a uh, you can find out in third world third world nation and a uh, de- developing country is not belongs to developing country if you see their their growth rate and and, and global positioning here the testing agencies are so poor so poor people are dying but you know due to the religious faith they is because of god and because of other things people are dying still pe- elderly people are dying badly every day one can heard the news that somebody died somebody died somebody and but they didn't reach to the hospital for testing so how do you know that the whether that death is from from corona virus or something so there is even there is no any protocol followed by only the protocol followed by the big big cities not in in in, uh, in small states or small places so so the only thing is that you have to test 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 and now china has started and after testing you have to whether whether testing uh, whether the you are positive or not you have to provide the vaccination to your citizen as the us us government did it almost 60% their population 60 to 65% population of the us us they they receive the vaccination if you see the indian indian economy or india they they only got i think i think uh, up to the 10% population out of 1.4 uh, 1.4 billion for nigeria if you see the only i think one at one percent people uh, receive the vaccination out of more than 200 million population so so you know only the thing is that i can say for now the china uh, manages their policies their economy very well than the others that only i can say is there any okay. other question yes doctor there is a question also related to india mm-hmm. and uh, at the beginning of the presentation you uh-huh. indicated a graph where it th- did say that the economic forecast economic growth forecast in india is yes. going to be around 11.5 for yeah. the next and since you mentioned only 10% of indian population have been vaccinated how do you think india is going to achieve 11.5% growth you know, rate we 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 it is a projected it is a projected and projection you know is it was based on uh when it was in uh, october september august august september october november december last year and if if somebody see uh, august september october november december last year 2020 india was very normal very normal first wave was subsided almost subsided uh if you see if one can ask me now what is the projection projection can be different and this projection you know based on that time that time and that time agriculture sector was doing very well and if you see the composition of gdp the services sectors are contributing almost 70% almost 70% to the gdp and the industry sector only only contributing about uh, uh, 16 to 15 to 15 to 16% so if the industry sectors has been shut down that one is not going to be more impact it will be impacted but not more impacted because services sectors are still open and that services sectors moreover within the services sector uh, software and consultancy and and computer and other electronic devices that one is uh, contributing more within the services sector so this projection was based on that that month you know if somebody projected in 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 february march when the people are dying badly 4000 every day 4000 4000 then the projection was will be different so this projection is was based on you know uh, last year and last year the agriculture sector was 
deal way, did very well and still though the india india is a developing country and it is it is achieved to development but it is developing country and still the india is a is a is a agriculture sector uh, uh, primarily based on agriculture sector because out of out of total population almost 60% population are directly or indirectly engaged with the agriculture activity so that projection was based on that timing you know the fourth quarter of 2020 and the fourth quarter of 2020 is august september october november december and in that time the time was very normal even i was in india and people are moving with mask there was no problem no lockdown nothing was there so if everything was open then you can you know you can project accordingly that is my answer Okay, thank you, doctor. I have uh, we have one last question concerning the oil producing countries. As you mentioned uh, very clearly during your webinar, that uh, economies of oil producing countries, I mean the countries which are dependent on oil revenues, have been hit very hard. Uh, like like Azerbaijan, production. like Azerbaijan is a one of the OPEC member nation country. No, actually it's not a member of the OPEC. Uh, but Azerbaijan is participating in OPEC Plus project. Uh, that's Russia. why I said that's why it's not a full yes. member, but it is a regional exactly. regional member and part-time member because sure. Azerbaijan is an oil-producing country, as I know that yes. since since beginning. Yes. Yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Doctor, how do you think uh, you know the market is going to uh, when and how do you think the market is going to stabilize itself? Uh, because we know that. Uh, we see some uh, indication of growth. For instance, the price of oil is moving uh, between $67 to $72. When do you think a market will be stabilized? You know, as per the first, first answer is economic answer. Second, uh, second uh, part of my answer I will give you politically. First answer is, you know, as much as uh, the economy is going to be open, you know, and the energy demand is going to be high. So in that way, the price definitely will goes up. In that way, if the business scenario is is showing positive trends, definitely it will be goes up. But at the same time, at the same time, if the price is going down, and if OPEC cut their oil production per day, the definitely price is going to be stabilized. But you know the Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia current government of Saudi Arabia. they are adamant and they are not going to reduce the you know the oil pr- production per day and if you are not uh, reducing oil production per day and the prices is going down and energy demand is going down definitely definitely prices you know the going down and where we don't know exactly and if you remember last year is price prices was about 1 dollar during the severe severe uh, severe uh, severe uh, attack of this uh, uh, corona virus so that was my economic answer as the economy started opening the demand for energy is going to be open and prices definitely will goes up but condition is that the price uh, the, the the output of oil per day production by the opec member nations and other allied body will be constant if they increase the price will not increase price will fall that is secondly you know the there is a in, within the opec there is a problem there is a problem with the saudi arabia there is a problem in iran there is a problem in venezuela there is a you know the the economies within the economies there is a problem and if you see the iraq iran uh, kuwait saudi arabia bahrain uh, uh, uae oman this most of the countries those who are producing oil you see the stabilize the stabilization is going on like 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 uh, apart from the corona virus pandemic like saudi arabia engaging with the yemen to fighting with them houthis now currently yesterday you heard about the taliban has took over the uh, afghanistan that one another issue that one is going to impact to the uh, kuwait iran pakistan and uh, and 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 other part of the you know the part of the gulf uh, gulf, gulf gulf countries so that politically also having problem so this this political problem is not going to be stabilized and peace will not going to be sustained then i'm i'm not sure when it is going to be uh, you know uh, when it is going to be uh, stabilized but if you see in 20 2015 2016 almost price oil was more than you know 140 150 uh, usd per barrel but due to this uh, global pandemic and you see the next is bitcoin is coming 
Bitcoin, this Bitcoin, most of the people, they are investing in their money into the Bitcoins to get more money, to make more money. So one day this one is, is, is going to be prove, uh, prove as a big bubble, as a as world witness in 2008, like subprime crisis in, in, in the United States. Most of the banks, those who landed the loan to the people and other industry, they become bankrupt, bankrupt and they, they were started seeking the stimulant package from the government. So Bitcoin is coming in a way and sooner or later you, you will see this Bitcoin is going to create a problem for the world economy. Uh, thanks again for a very comprehensive answer, Doctor. And if you don't mind, I have one last question for you. Please, to, please, uh, please, you're to, wrap up, to wrap up today's webinar, I think we had a very fruitful uh, discussion. But the last question is, Doctor, how do you, how long do you think it will take us for uh, to reach to pre-COVID, you know, level of economic growth? How long do you think we need? To be honestly, I'm telling you, it, it is not going to be over. Honestly, it is not going to be over. You know, nobody was using before, like common man was not using sanitizer. Common man, man was not using mask. Common man was not using uh, gloves, you know. So this is the, this is, this one is a create opportunity of businesses, you know. And it is not going to be over because if you want to travel from Baku to somewhere, you have to do for Corona test and you have to pay money. And once you reach that country, you have to go for again test. You have to pay money. You have to stay in quarantine. You have to pay money for the hotel from your pocket. So who is going to stop this one? Despite of, despite of the vaccine, like everybody get vaccine, like my, I'm a fully vaccinated. But without COVID RT-PCR, I can't travel to India. I can't travel to any place. I have to, I have to go through the RT-PCR. And it is about 60 to 60 to uh, 70 USD per RT-PCR. So this one is a source of income, source of revenue. So though I have received the, my full doses, it is not going to be over. That is my perception. When it was come, when it came in, 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 in February 2020, I used to tell to my colleague, even within my department and my colleague, that this one is going to be not over within a year or two. It is going to be long way. I, now I can change my perception and I can say that it is going to be forever. It is not going to be stopped. That is my perception. And if it is stopped, thank God. I, can, I, 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 I wanted to be proven wrong by the Almighty God. But I think it is not going to be stopped. That is my, 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 my perception. I may be wrong. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor, for your answer. Although it sounds pessimist, but it's more closer to realistic uh, scenario. Yeah. In our opinion. You have to be pessimist, but you know you have to see the things and you have to analyze economically how how it is going to be impact. So nobody wanted to stop their source of revenue. Nobody want to stop their source of revenue. You, yeah. me, anybody, everybody want to get money, 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 money. Though money is not important, but it is important. As we are talking economics today, it's very important. Yeah. And yeah. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, professors, for having agreed to deliver this webinar for our students and for our faculty members. It was a pleasure to host you. And Western, on behalf of Western Caspian University, I'm grateful to you for your cooperation. And I hope in future we will be able to to further cooperate with you in different formats. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. If you yeah. invited me, I'm happy to be participate. Yeah. Uh, as a, as a, I will be happy. I will be happy. It's my pleasure to have yeah. interaction with all you, all your faculty staff, uh, all your uh, uh, students, and I really appreciate and I extend my sincere thanks to the head of department, Department of Economics, and you, you yourself, University Western University of Caspian, Vice Chancellor, Chancellor others, uh, dean and directors and uh, dignitaries. Uh, it is my pleasure and uh, an honor to have uh, and to have worked with you people. Thank you so much. And I hope I communicated well. If there is any problem, my email address is with uh, Mr. Elmir. They may, uh, they may, they can, he can share with you people and you can ask me uh, whatever you wish to ask in economics. I will try to answer myself. Uh, I will try to
uh, give you best answer. I will try. I, I can't say I, I will, but I will try to give my best answer. Thank you so much for inviting me once again. Thank you, Professor. And if you don't like this, uh, can I share your presentation with our students? You can share. You can share. And 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 you know, sorry to sorry to ask you now. Can you can you uh, edit edit the that letter? Which of course. just edit and and if possible, you can send it to me. Okay. Of Thank course. you so much. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. You can share with them. Okay. Thank you very much also for all who participated in today's webinar and hope to see you in our future webinars. Inshallah, inshallah, by God's grace. Inshallah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank awesome. you so much. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.